Welcome to this segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound. This is brought to you by Be Simply. Stars, trees, clouds, and the moon. They all have a meaning and they look just like you. Soul, Silence, and Sound. Today we're going to talk about certainty in a moment where many might feel very confused. And so we're going to dive into this from a spiritual aspect that when we are plumb internally, it's easier to have more certainty with the waves that might be in and around us. doesn't mean that we might not uh, duck dive, crash, tumble on the shore. However, we can always return to home. And when I reference to home, I'm talking about the heart is your home and it's such a beautifully protected space when we move beyond the emotional system and we dive into the sacred system that's afforded to each and every one of us in these human, animal, insect, tree, plants all kinds of systems that are interconnected with us and this sacred energy. So the reason I felt it would be good is because the sentiment I receive and even I think for many of us um, have gone in and out of certainty to confusion as of late. And so when you might be confused, there's usually something on the outer world presenting itself to you that is either a surprise or is incongruent with your state of being. And not just the surface level being, but the internal being. And so when we connect to this aspect of ourself, it's super powerful to understand that that's something that has to be watered, that sacred aspect of ourself. And the more that we are diligent with that, the more certainty we have in all situations. And I am a huge advocate for people to water their faith, whether it be in nature, it might be in even science, it might be in a theological background, but it's, it's really watering the unexplainable. And then there's something there that you can meet to continue to contemplate and practice being this morsel of information that you've gathered. And when we're talking about everything from theology to science, a lot of it is not provable even science, because there can be a manipulation. And so when that manipulation occurs, that's where confusion starts to come in. And this can happen on a spiritual level, a scientific level, on all levels in our society. And at some point in time, we became okay with uh, the idea of manipulation to lead people to somewhere we wanted. And that is in all different arenas from the arts to finance, to business, to consumption. We've decided, or we had decided that being manipulated through the art of a story was okay. Yet this is our moment as each and every one of you awaken and might feel uncertain right now. I encourage you to become certain with your heart center. I encourage you to really hold yourself accountable to what that word means, um, where you might create uncertainty, because if you decide to manipulate other people based on an idea, a concept, oh, it's good for them kind of thing, bit by bit, that becomes a slippery slope. And especially if that manipulation is serving the eye, Versus the collective, meaning that how do we make a decision to be honest and truthful and certain with our words as we 
decide to engage with the world at large. So this is a choice that you have in each and every moment to decide, hey, what what's beneficial for me to do in this moment? And how can I bring more certainty to myself and others? So the simple way is that you can start to show up for yourself and show up for that sacred aspect of self, no matter how you define it. And sometimes this could be sitting in front of your canvas as an artist. This might be writing prose. This might be creating music or song. This might be being in prayer or meditation, but something that allows you to drop in to the present moment and you're certain about everything around you because you can touch it. You can interact with it. You can have influence with it and you can get a feedback loop. And this is what happens when we practice with a faith. And when we have faith, we have a call and response and it's really important that each and every one of us holds our integrity and our code of ethics and all of those things within that practice. The reason being is that, like I said in the beginning, it's easy because as a society, we've gotten into this bad habit of saying it's okay, agreeing that we could be manipulated the minute we turn on the TV, agreeing that we can be manipulated as soon as we turn on social media, agreeing that we can be manipulated as soon as we turn on sports, television, religion, anything, news, everything in around us. We can even be manipulated when we walk into a store. And so how you reel that back in is that you start to be genuine with the people, places, and things to the best of your ability in this moment. You can think of it as a pebble in the water all around you. And I I can promise you that if you bring in that faith, that divinity, that word that I cannot even put into a word, but it's miraculous, it's divine, and it's uh, something that has the ability to alter any and all things. And the word that some might use is love, not a codependent love, but a sacred love. And I found it interesting the other day, there's been this little blip going around that they've been recently discovering that authenticity is at the highest residence. Like that's what people are resonating with right now. And that's a beautiful thing. They said greater than love. And I would debate that point that the love that people were maybe being measured for is codependent love, is grasping love, is the love that will cause suffering. When we go into divine love, that love doesn't cause suffering. It elevates you and the circumstance for the best outcome. However, you have to be willing to enter into that sacred energy and hold it without fear, with deep integrity and knowing, and to trust in that moment that what's being orchestrated when you're in that frequency will be the highest and best outcome. And so I've seen this, this miracle many times over in my own personal life and in my client's life and people that are in and around me. And I know not to grasp at it. And I also know that when things appear to not be the way we want them, there's still these beautiful divine things to witness in the most tragic of situations. So right now, in this moment here, many are trying to find their sea legs, many humans, and are, I would say, tired of the you spin me ride round and are ready for that certainty. So if inspired in this next week, especially as we move in a little deeper into 
this uh, lunar cycle is to really pay attention what's happening in and around you and decide what your certainty is. And to remember that if you aren't certain in a situation about what you need to do, where you need to go, uh, it's a good moment to take that pause and enter into that sacred energy through the path that you've chosen for yourself. And that's very personal and it's very private. It's very private, similar to what one uh, does in the throes with their romantic partner. That's private. Those, these are very sacred interactions. So I encourage you, while it's nice to be able to share these with a sangha, that's what we call in certain traditions, and you can find that. However, I really encourage encourage you to deepen that understanding with yourself because it'll be easier to know when you do communicate or participate in the Sangha what's true and what's not or within a church or a temple or an ashram whatever it might be you'll be able to know or an indigenous community um, even in a scientific lab you'll know what's true and what's not so as we deepen into this point of action, I encourage you just to get really certain with yourself, get certain with what is important to you. And I encourage you to just be true to that. And then if inspired, feel into the divinity, the sacred heart, I call it, and see how it wants to support you. And sometimes <laughs> it will support you in ways that might not uh, feel comfortable at the moment they're occurring. However, they're leading you somewhere. And that's where I say, I, I see it on all sides. I see some very miraculous things happen in tragedy. And I see some really beautiful things that happen just by bringing that resonance in and evading that tragedy. But either way, the energy's working and holding each and every one exactly how they need to be in that given moment. And so as we go into this meditation today, if inspired, I, I encourage you as we lead in just to feel into what you're certain about. Just pick one thing and lean into it. And then I encourage you to go beyond it just to see what that certainty leads you to. And as you flow with that, just gently from there, let it all go and just be. Because as I mentioned, when we're in the present moment with all things around us that we can see, hear, touch, and be present with, it's really difficult to create uncertainty, especially if there's a group of people around. Because everyone is observing simultaneously. And so if we make that commitment to be present with the world that's around us, we can assist with our fellow brothers and sisters by creating certainty, not by a world that's been manipulated, but by our physical interactions in and around where we are. And bit by bit, we will bring ourselves back into the right action will bring us deeper into the chamber of the divine love and we will have a deeper knowing that no matter what we're exactly where we're supposed to be so with that being said I welcome you to bring your breath up into your heart And then exhale out.
again in here and exhale another one inhale and exhale and then gently from there as you follow your breath I welcome just to feel into one thing just one thing that you're certain about and allow that to lead you into the silent meditation. And then when you're ready, release that and just be.
gently from there, I welcome you to gently lean back and recline or move fully into Shavasana, a prone position on your back with your palms facing upward as we transition into receiving sound. As you settle in, just take a nice gentle breath into the heart and out. Again, inhale. And exhale. One more inhale and exhale and then continue to follow your natural breathing pattern.
no g e o n e o n e e o n e o n e e o n e o n e o n e e o n e o n e e o n e o n e o n e e o n e o n e e o n e o n e o n e e o n e o n e Taking a soft, gentle breath into your heart center, gently breathing in and out. And again, inhale. And exhale. Another one, inhale and exhale. And then gently from there, following your natural breathing pattern, when you're ready, just rolling over onto your right or left side. And then you can stay there if you wish, or you can come up into an upright seated position. Either way, take another deep breath in and out. Another one, inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Good. And then gently from there, I just want to welcome you all to sit a little bit longer. We'll exit out with little c a g e r y Scott fields of flowers. And I welcome you in the next few days and this week or whenever you're listening to this to feel into what you're certain about and deepen what that is for you, especially from a spiritual or theological practice. Really deepen that. So when you might feel you're wavering, you know where to move towards to deepen what. Brings you home. And if you're ready to break the spell of manipulation, all you have to do is start saying, I did not agree to this. Every time you discover that you have a manipula- manipulation in front of you, You just state, I did not agree to this. Even if it was hidden in legal text, you did not agree to this because that was a manipulation. And when or if you catch yourself manipulating another, correct yourself. Bring it into right action in alignment with what you're certain with. Calibrate it there. You'll find great freedom when you bring it into that place. 
So until next time, I want to thank Randa Rab, Dante Marino, K. Adrie Scott, Support the Arts. There's so many great musicians out there. There's a lot of musicians out there that uh, really would be welcoming your love and your support and all throughout the arts. So as inspired, please support them. And we're going to exit out with little Kadri Scott. And I want to thank you all for being here, taking this sacred time for yourself, the sacred space for yourself. And until next time, this is Suzanne signing out with a full heart, soft, gentle smile, deep bow.